worship.
I'm still thirsty for more, Sister Tina. Tonight, I want you to remember our missionaries in prayer. That God would grant them godly success in every endeavor that they are in tonight and in the coming days. Brother Matthew Yeager and his family in Israel. Brother Ryan Thompson and his family in Brazil, South America. Continue to be a church body that prays for the peace of Jerusalem. We're mandated by the word of God to, to pray that and to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Continue to pray for my Nana and, and Brother Ernest. They desperately want to be in the house of God. But physical things does not grant them that ability. We should all treasure being, being right. having a desire and ability to be here tonight. Someone else tonight with a need. Now's the time. Remember those needs? Amen. She would be here tonight.
back to our seats tonight. I, when I say that I believe a miracle is going to happen tonight, can I tell you that I, I feel it in the Holy Ghost? Can I tell you that when a light bulb goes off spiritually, that is a miracle? Can I tell you, Sister Ann Faye, that when that happens, that that is, that is a miracle, that is a blind man or a blind woman that receives their sight? Can I tell you that only God can do that? Physically and spiritually. I can intercede for you all day long, but until God does the work, Sister Victoria, it is not done. But we serve a God that is still opening up blind and eyes and deaf and ears. Tonight is going to be a little bit on the different side, you notice I brought this humongous Bible in here tonight. And those of you that know me know that I don't normally do that. I use my iPad. And I heard someone speak the other night and they said, I normally use my iPad or iPhone, but tonight this is going to be my iBible. <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna go inside the iBible tonight. Brother Coralino, you never heard that one before, have you? Well, you didn't laugh like that. And that was funny. Uh, we rebuked that hindrance. Church, can I tell you that when God puts something on you, I said it this morning that I refuse, Sister Aunt Faye, to be a hindrance to the flow of the Holy Ghost on these eight acres. When God puts it on you, you have two options. You can be obedient, right, or you can be disobedient, rendering you unavailable. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be spiritually available. I do. I want to be spiritually available. I want my brothers and sisters to be spiritually available in the house tonight. I want them to be that in the coming days. How many knows that God gives us the Word of God not just for pleasure reading, but He gives us this book. This is a guideline. If you wonder what I need to do or how I need to do, have no fear. The Word of God is here. And not just here, but it is near. And that's the Word that we're going to stand on tonight. I had prayer before service. To remove any hindrances from, from myself. I felt the hindrance leave. And I was instructed by an elder that I have spiritual and physical confidence in. To fear not. Fear not tonight over the message. I was instructed and I believe it in faith. That there was an angel that was going to be right behind me as I gave the word. I don't know about y'all but I'm thankful for that. Tonight, I want to begin, and it's just going to be more of a teaching than, than the normal. I say that, but then it turns, you know. We're just going to let God, right. we're going to let God flow in this house tonight and not be a hindrance. We're going to remove any hindrances from our life, right? right. I hope we did a great job of that this morning. The Word of God teaches and tells me in, in Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 4th verse, by faith, somebody say by faith. <laughs> Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his guilt, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. How many knows that Cain killed his brother Abel? Cain killed his brother Abel. But how many knows from the reading of the word of God that even when Abel died, that his blood was a testimony before God and before this land of what had happened. He was dead and gone, but his testimony was still alive and on this earth. Tonight, after this service, I want my testimony and your testimony that we're going to take with us. I want it to remain alive and well. Let's worship him one more time tonight. Rebuke any hindrances from your life, from your mind, so that we can all pay attention and we can learn and we can let the Word of God just envelop us and develop us into what we need to be tonight. 
tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thy son of David. And I want to preface this by saying if you're if you find offense to this, it's not offense, it's conviction. You can be seated in the house. Again, it's not offense that I bring to you. I would try to never use the, the platform, the podium, this stage as artillery right. against anything but the enemy. Tonight, I want us to, to learn and then just realize some things. Tonight, I want to bring to you consume the sacrifice. How many want your sacrifices to be consumed? Right. Can I make one more preface by asking a question? Man and woman, who has something in your life that only God can work through and work it out by the showing of hands? Can I tell you that there's a way to get that? There's a way to get that. And I'm not trying to say we're not here to manipulate God. We're here to submit to God. There is a difference there. If we were going to be manipulating God, it would be for a season. Well, I, I'll do this if you'll do this. We're not here to do that. How many is going to choose tonight to be a lifelong man or woman of God in this house? I'm here. I'm here to be a lifelong Christian, a follower of God. That's what I want to lay down. My seeds. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. To turn that brightness up. And in process of time, I can't do it in the eye Bible, though. I can't turn the brightness up, of course, so you're going to have to bear with me. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Somebody say an offering. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of, of his flock. And not just one of the firstlings of the flock, but of the fat thereof, a fat of them, a good looking one. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very, very wroth, or he was very angry. And his countenance, it fell, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? What's going inside him? What's going on with you, Cain? And why is thy countenance fallen? Can I tell you, anytime God asks a question, it is not to get an answer out of you. It is to provoke a thought to be birthed inside of you. Anytime God asks a question, he asked me one just a few months ago. Who told you to do that? Can I tell you how your pastor answered that? I'm sorry, God. I made a false move, God. Forgive me of that, God. Why? Because I want to stay, I want to stay in the flow. I want to stay, I don't want to be that hindrance. And I was that hindrance. But just like everybody in this house that I led them through a time of repentance, I repented over that. But anytime God asks you a question, just know He's not looking for an answer. The Lord says in verse 7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Can I tell you that the Lord of all creation accepted Abel's sacrifice because it sounds a whole lot like tithing. The firstlings, hello? A topic that no pastor in, in anywhere in the world wants to cover <laughs> is tithing. The Word teaches and tells me in Genesis 28 and 22 that Jacob made a vow with God and he says, and this stone, verse 22 of chapter 28, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And that was Bethel. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Leviticus 27 and 30 says, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit 
on the tree is the Lord's. And it is holy unto the Lord. Wait a minute. You're telling me that my sacrifice of tithing to the Lord is holy? I want God to consume my sacrifice. Come on now, tonight I want God to consume my sacrifice. But I've got to do my part. I've got to do my part. Somewhere in the, in the Old Testament, there were uh, some people of God that was, that was bringing forth a lame sacrifice. And I ministered on that a few months ago. God did not honor that. God was not in the mix of that. They were bringing forth some lame lambs and some lame of some blind lambs. They were bringing God what was left over than some of the best that they had to offer God. Come on now. Now you know better than I know what God has blessed you with. It all, it all comes down to do I want my sacrifice consumed? Do I want an able life or do I want a cane life, a cursed life? I'm just being real with you tonight. I want us to be a blessed people. I don't want us to be a cursed people. I want us to be a people that when we come into this place, that God, He consumes our sacrifice. Holy. Deuteronomy 14 and 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. If God blesses you with it, then we are commanded by the word of God. And just so you know, tithe is a Hebrew word. And in the synonym for that word is ten. T E N T H. Why do you why do you pay tithing to church? Because the word of God mandates me. Because I want my sacrifice consumed. Hello? I'm not ministering this because I've asked the church secretary who pays tithes and who does not. I don't want to know. For, for purposes like this, I do not want to know. What I want to know is that the people on these eight acres, that their sacrifices are being consumed. One of the first things that the enemy, and I would say it was not the enemy, it was the flesh, when Brother Jody turned his life around and God began to work in it, he whispered, the flesh whispered to him and said, you barely pay your bills. How in the world are you going to pay your tithes? Can I tell you the flesh will tell you that sometimes? Can I tell you tonight, you cannot afford not to pay your tithes? I'm just being real with you. Through a mandate of God, Malachi, the third chapter. Why the ten? Why the ten? Because it's a Hebrew word. It's I just said it. It's it's the same meaning as tithe. Ten and tithe. To Hebrews, that means the same exact word. That's why it was used in the word about bringing your tithe, all of it, every bit of it. Not what you think you ought to pay, but what the Word says to pay. Come on now, I want our sacrifices consumed in this house. I want us to be obedient. I don't want us to hinder the flow. When we're disobedient to the Word of God, we are a hindrance. Maybe these two lessons go hand in hand from this morning to tonight. And again, I want you to know that I'm bringing this to you with love, and it's not all about money. My nana taught me that a few years ago. It's not all about money. Yes, tithe on your money, tithe of your increase. But what about tithing of your time, son? She said. You know, no, not everybody except for maybe Sister Felicia, but God's fixing to work that out as well, is awake for 24 hours. 10% of 24 hours, 2.4. Two hours, 40 minutes, right? Well, nobody's, I don't think anybody's really truly awake for 24 hours. So I, I want you to figure that up. The time that you wake up, revive a five and shook my head all around. 
I keep saying the hair. Thank God for that. Distraction. But I want you to calculate the time you wake up to the time that you fall asleep. And I want you to ask yourself, do I tithe God on my time? How could you tithe God on your time by turning off that social poison? By turning off the TV? And if you do have the TV on, put it on an anointed Holy Ghost filled message. If you need one, text my phone. I will gladly send you one. I can get in the Word and I can give God the tithing of my time by reading His Word. I encourage you to do that as well. But Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10, I love this. And we're quiet, but I knew that we probably would be, Sister Melissa. And that's all right too. Bring ye all the tithes. Somebody said all the tithes. All the tithes. That means every bit of it. And it's a tenth. My Lord have mercy when you go to a restaurant, they're wanting 18%. They want more of God. They're requiring more of you than God is. And we gladly, don't we? Well, I don't know about gladly. But we go ahead and pay it because we like the food. If you did not pay that, what would happen? You can laugh and say, well, they'd make you wash dishes. No, they would not. They would dial three numbers. And you would be encouraged to pay the bill if I had my guess about it. What if God was like that? When we refuse to... To give him what he has mandated in his word. Again, I don't know what you give. The one I know that I give. The one that I know about is me and Brother Cole. But the word says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house, mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Or try me now and see. See if I won't do it. Pay your tithes and see what happens. Give to me sacrifices of money, of time, and see what happens. See if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I love that. Who wants to be blessed in this house? I mean, you ask a question like that, and I should have seen legs and arms and everything fly up in the air within reason, that is. We want to be blessed. But the word does not stop there. In verse 11, it says, And I will rebuke the devourer from your states. The thing that is coming against you, the devourer to your finances, I will rebuke the devourer. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, the things that you have. He shall not rob you from it or of it. And neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. Man, that sounds great, Sister Caitlin. The sacrifice of my tithing is holy unto God, number one. And when God consumes that sacrifice, number two, I will reap that blessing. Number three, the devourer will be rebuked. Who will rebuke it? Will I have to? No, the Lord of hosts will rebuke the devourer from what you've been blessed with. And it does not stop there, Brother Richard Jolly. And my future harvest, how many's got a future harvest in your mind? Come on now. The word says, and your future harvest, it will be protected as well. I don't know about y'all, but I want those things in my life. So therefore, I'm going to be willing to obey the word of God and pay tithing on my increase. And I've heard, I've had people to say, well, do you pay off of the, the net pay or the gross pay?
My answer and reply to that is, how much of God do you want? I know what I pay. How much of God do you want? And that sounds well, fine, and good in Malachi about the blessings of the Lord is here. When I'm obedient and I'm not a hindrance, we leave that part out of the song. The blessing of the Lord is here. The devourer will be rebuked. And my future harvest is intact. If I will be obedient to the word of God, we leave that part out of the song. Oftentimes, we, we just do things because that's what we've seen other church people do. Can I be honest with you tonight? God help me. And oftentimes, we don't really understand the why behind, behind things, right? Malachi, the third chapter again, and the eighth verse. Will a man rob God? Question mark. Yet he have robbed, yet ye have robbed me. Robbed God. Hold up. Pump those brakes. But ye have, ye have robbed me. But ye say wherein have we robbed thee? Question mark. In tithes and in offerings. Think about it like that. You want your sacrifice consumed? Or do you want the curse? Weigh out the differences. Can you afford to pay your tithes? Weigh out the differences. Can you afford that sacrifice in your life? I beseech you, brethren. I encourage each and every one of us. You can afford to do it. You can afford to do it. We make, we make time for things that are important to us. Just like when we want a new vehicle, we purpose it in our lives. We make, we make it for that. Oh, oh I can do that. I, I, I can balance it out. I can, I can do that. I can buy that new four-wheeler, right? That new side-by-side. -side. You can't really afford it. But you go ahead and go out there and you do it anyway, right? Anybody else ever been there? Why not tithing? Why can't we look at that in the same aspect? I, I, I have to pay it. My tithing. It is, it is my sacrifice to God. And I want my sacrifices consumed. I want God to accept my sacrifices, Sister Pam. I don't want to be the king. I want to be the able. That when I leave this earth, that there's a testimony that I leave behind. By faith, sometimes we have to, we have to pay our tithing. We have to, I don't like saying that. We give our tithing by faith sometimes. God, you know that I've got X amount of money and I've got to go to work and I've got this amount of gas and I've got this bill and that bill. But I'm going to bring it to the storehouse and I'm going to give it in faith. I encourage you to try it and see if God will not consume that sacrifice and open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing on your life that you cannot even contain. Down, shaking together and running over. Right. Give and it shall be given unto thee. Can I add that my daddy always taught me, son, give tithing and give some more. Don't stop with just tithing. Give a little bit more. If you can do it, try. You can't outgive God. It'll all come back to you. It may come back in the form of money, and a lot of times it will increase. But it's liable to come back not just as a financial blessing. Like I said, we're not here to manipulate God. We're here to obey God. You see, I want and I need for the sacrifices of the church body on these eight acres to be an acceptable sacrifice. Not just give of the leftover. Well, this is my leftover. But of the first fruits is what the word says. Can I tell you that an accepted sacrifice 
is used and utilized by God. Try me now and see. Second Chronicles 5 and starting with chapter 6. I want to talk about a man that, that gave. Of course, his father was known as the man after God's own heart. So he knew a little bit of something about making God happy and pleasing God, Sister Kim. We're talking about King Solomon tonight. The word says in verse 6, also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel. I want to say that again. All the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark, they sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not even be told or numbered for multitude. They gave, they sacrificed. Can I tell you that that livestock, that was their finances back then? That was their, their food on the table. They didn't have McDonald's or that upside down W for whatever reason that is. Still don't understand that. But the word says that the number could not be told for there was such a multitude that they had sacrificed. Verse 13, skipping down to it. And it begins to talk about how Solomon not only provoked and encouraged the, the people to to give, to sacrifice. It didn't stop there. The priests, they came out. And what did they do? They got tambourines. They got harps. They got, their, they got musical instruments. They used their vocal cords to praise God. Can I tell you, sometimes that is your sacrifice of praise. If you don't think a sacrifice of praise is real, you've never went through anything and brought yourself up to the house of God and just lifted up your hands and worshiped God. Can I tell you that every service that I, I encourage and provoke people to worship and praise, I'm not feeling 100%. Uh-oh, the truth is out. But I know that I know for the Zachary Noel, if I will sacrifice a praise to my living God, I know that I know that His presence will come to it tonight. Consuming the sacrifice. But the priests, the Levites, said they were the ones that was able to, to do the praise and worship. There was a tribe that was able to do it. Everybody else pretty much just got to, to worship. Nobody else got on the other part of it. The word says in verse 13, it came even to pass as the trumpeteers and singers were as one. They were as one. To make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. And then that the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory All through that sacrifice. Not a manipulation, but a sacrifice. Again, I ask you, anybody got an issue tonight that only God can work through? You remember a few weeks ago, Sister Tina, when I asked, I don't know if it was a, a Monday night prayer service or what it was, but I asked if I knew that there was a solution or a cure, and I sat down on it, what would you think about me? And I, I sat down and I did not share it with you. What would you think about me? Somebody said it and I can't remember who it was. Shame. Shame on you. That's what she said. Shame on you. Mighty God. Consume the sacrifice. Consume the sacrifice. The word goes on to say in 2 Chronicles 7 and 1, Now when Solomon had made an end of prayer, you see he had a tumultuous prayer. 
After all this sacrifice, after the glory filled the temple with a cloud, and the ministers fell to their knees because they could not even minister the Word of God. That reminds me of when people fall out in the Spirit. There's a cloud that comes over them that they can't even stand anymore. When God consumes the sacrifices. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and it consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord the house. Again, we're not here to manipulate God. We're here to obey God. Anybody want to obey God tonight? Come on now. Let's do that one more time. Does anybody in this house want to obey God tonight? You see, as the people began to see this, the word goes on to say that they sacrificed even more. When they began to see God move like he was moving, they began to give even more of themselves than what was required. I'm going somewhere on that note. Right. How many has been seeing things move in this house? Yes. Yes. I knew Sister Kim would react to that. I'm going to tell you what, when that deliverance happened that Wednesday night, she began to give more of herself. Come on now, I know others in this house, they began to get more of their self when they saw the glory of God come inside this place and deliver this child. But the fact they gave more than what God had required them with. I believe that they did. Not just in finances, but in their time, in their prayer life. I believe that it sparked some attention. And it said, hey, if God will deliver that one,
willing to be, comp be bold enough to say, I'm going to give more than what is required of me. And I'm not just talking about finances tonight. You see, God just doesn't want your finances. He wants all of you. He wants every part of you. Everybody's still awake? I told y'all there's going to be more teaching tonight. Verse 15 says, Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto thy prayer, unto the prayer that is made in this place. In the place where there is sacrificing going on, God's eyes, it says, are open to that very place. And that his ears there attend unto the prayer that is made in the place, in the house of sacrifice. Why are you encouraging us to sacrifice? Because I want God's eyes on this place. I want his ears attend to the prayers that are going on in this place, Lord. I'm desperate tonight. I'm desperate tonight for your attention. Brother Corey Leon Brown, if, if there was a home on fire and you were in it, hear my voice, I would try to my best to get inside that house and drag you out, dead weight and all. Yes. It's time that we rise up and do the same thing spiritually for people that we know that can be given more and doing more than what is required. Dragging them out of. The word says that people will be drugged out and they will still have the stench of smoke upon them. Can I tell you that I was that child of God that had the stench of a burning hell on me. But I was dragged out. And such, a, such were some of you tonight. The stench of the smoke of a burning hell. I believe it was from some sacrificing going on. From some people that were interceding for me. I can back that up by the word of God and I'm ministering that to you. How he consumes the sacrifices of his people. The word goes on to say in verse 16. For now have I chosen. I want God to choose this place. I want him to mark this place. Not as a desolation. But a house of deliverance. A house of prayer. A house of praise. In a house of sacrifice. Yes. For now I have chosen and I have sanctified this house. Sanctified. The Hebrew word for that is kadesh. Meaning purified. I have made that house holy. Come on now. Amen. You know what the word says? Be ye, be ye holy. For I am holy. How many knows that we serve a holy God tonight? At least I do. I don't know what God you serve, but I serve a holy God. And He mandates you can't live the way that your flesh wants to live. You can't live with whatever way that the world mandates and promotes you to live. I am holy. Therefore, honey, baby, you got to be holy. And that is my sacrifice tonight. A holy lifestyle. It is the way that I talk. the way that I conduct myself. Yes. Holiness is. How many knows without holiness you will not see God? Amen. Church, if you were in a burning house tonight, I would try my best to save your life. I'm giving you exactly what God would have us to know tonight. To take it and to grow from it. For now I have chosen and I have sanctified this house. I have made it holy and I have purified it because of the sacrifice. That my name may be there forever. I want the name of Jesus to reside in this place as long as there is a world. I want there to be a threshing floor that you know if I have a need I'm going to take it to Blackside Pentecostal Church and I'm going to get down to an electrician floor and I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to be delivered. Why? Because this is a house of sacrifice. But it does not happen if we do not all get on board. 
It cannot be a house of sacrifice with one or two. Out of the mouth of the babe right there. Amen. Many let it be. So be it. That my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Romans, the 12th chapter. The first verse. God be with us. If you was ever around any of Sister Robin's Sunday school classes, you would know that this was her favorite verse in the Word. This is to all the, the, the people that would tell you, live how you want to live. I almost entitled this of the world tonight for this reason. Because the world would tell you, do what you want. Just being real. God is merciful and God is full of grace. And yes, He is, but He requires of us. He requires of us some things. I told you at the beginning of service, if you're looking for a guy, if you have an issue in your life, all you got to do is pick the Word of God up and you will receive the guidance that you need. That's the problem in the world today. People don't want to pick up the Word of God and spend time with Him they would rather rant and rave to a friend or to social poison and get pity over a move of God. Go oh, on now, it's true. They'd rather post it on a Snapchat story that you think is being deleted. But it's in a server. And I feel like one day it will be used against you. That's just me. God didn't tell me that. That's just me. But I want this house to be known as a house of sacrifice. Not just in finances. Not just in my prayer time. But in Romans the 12th chapter. In the first verse. It says, I beseech, you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. The way that you want to. To present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. And acceptable unto God. Which is your. Which is your reasonable service. And it goes on to say in verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. To the teaching of this world. Can I tell you that the spirit of rebellion is in this world? The prince and the power of the air. He's the one calling the shots from behind the scenes. He's the one that is fueling that fire. You can do what you want. Look like you want. Dress like you want. Sacrifice. Huh? Well, I'm present. I come to church. Present and not prepared. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, sometimes you got to prove, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, not the permissive will of God, but the perfect will of God. You see, tonight my body and your body has got to be a living sacrifice. Why are you saying that? Because the word of God tells me to say that.
you out. Spiritually, I'm doing everything that I can to bring you the message that God has laid upon me for the saints of God in this place. I want us to be a house of sacrifice. I want more addicts set free.
the world. Who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan. How did God? Even in 2024, I think it would behoove each and every one of us, men and women alike, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and say, am I acceptable unto God? Or am I trying to get some attention? Am I gratifying my flesh by wearing just as little bit of clothes and showing just as much skin as I possibly can get away with without being fully nude? Or am I serving God? If you're a man, we need to look like a man. If you're a, if you're a woman, you need to look like a woman. Can I tell you that there is a spirit upon this earth that wants to blend? Look at all the transgenderism going on. Look at the men and women share the bathroom. You know why? Because the enemy, Satan himself, has got a woman wanting to look like a man and a man to look like a woman. It's trying to bend the genders by normalizing the way that we look, the way that we dress. I'm just being real with you tonight. Just being real with you tonight. Mighty God, and I struggled with this one. And we're just about, we're just about through. How many knows that when you see what we would call a Pentecostal woman, what's the what's one of the first things that you notice other than a skirt? Long hair. Long hair. All my life, Sister Tina. Long hair. Long hair. If you dive into that, and I'm not saying dive into it with Google. Google is not always correct. Could y'all just trust me for just a just a little while on this? And forget about Google that even existing? Because oftentimes Google will lead you in the way that Google wants you to believe. It will bend you into the way that the world wants you to believe. But that's one of the first things that you notice is long hair. And a lot of times, and I prefaced this earlier by saying there's a lot of times that we, we just do things, Sister Ain't Faye, because we see others do it. We see others do it. And that's why, that's why you do it. And when you don't know why, the reason behind it you can fall into rebellion. You can be a hindrance to the flow of God in your life. Brother Corey Leon, again, I want to say it. If you were in a burning building, I would do everything I could to get you out of it. Tonight, I want to tell you why. I want to explain to you the power of a woman's uncut long hair. I want to, can I explain that to you tonight? The word says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 15, But if a woman have long hair, expounding it in the Greek, you would find that it's not just long hair, but it's tresses. Brother Jody, it's uncut hair. And again, I'm telling you, do not go to Google, because Google will not tell you this. But if a woman have long hair, uncut hair, it is a glory. To her. Now, a beautician will tell you you've got to trim the dead edges. Dead edges. I don't know what it is. The dead ends. The dead edges. The dead ends off for it to grow. Can I tell you that's a lie? And I'm calling that industry out. That is a lie. That is a, a the world using that against women. It is a glory to her. That's why. That's why it is a glory to that woman for her hair is given her for a covering. A man is mandated to 
not have long hair. It's in the Word. It's actually classified as a shame for a man to have long hair. But right here I read that a woman's hair, her uncut long hair, is her glory. 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. This is what I want you to pay attention to. If you've got a problem going on in your life, if you've got a situation, and you cannot seem to get up, you, you prayed and you fasted and you've done everything that you spiritually and biblically, biblically know to do, and God still just has seemingly not moved. If you've got a spouse that needs to be delivered, if you've got a family member that needs to be delivered, come on now. If you've got a spouse that you won't fill with the Holy Ghost. If there's an addict friend of yours that you won't set free and delivered and full of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, I've got the remedy for it. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. First Corinthians 11 and 5. Not only is a woman's uncut long hair her glory. But it says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 5, But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Anybody know what a, a shaved head woman represented in the word of God? A harlot, a woman of the night. A prostitute. A woman that would offer relations for money. Can I tell you where a lady cutting their hair originated way back then? And I knew not this until just the other day. It originated by some women that would get together and pay homage. They would sacrifice their cut hair to an idol. To an idol. There was a spirit of rebellion speaking to those ladies. Get them to, to do it. Cut that glory off. And sacrifice it to this idol. For if the woman be not covered, let her be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed not ought to cover his head for as much as he is the image of and the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Woman of God, if you want to be a glory, let that hair grow. I told you I had the remedy. Sister Melissa said, if, I, if you did not share it, shame on you. I'm sharing it with you. I want us to take this mandate that God has been laying on my heart for several weeks. And it has been a burden then to me to bring it to the listening ear. But again, if you were in a burning building and I just sat there, I would be worse than shame on you. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. I want you to mark this in your Bible. Verse 10. This is the main reason, not just for the glory of that long, uncut hair for that woman. But verse 10. For this cause ought the women to have power. Somebody say power.
There was a lady that, that her father was, was dying. We all stand tonight. There was a lady that was that her that her daughter was dying. And they called her and they told her, if you're going to see your father alive, I want you to come to see. Now is your moment to come see your dying father. This lady had, had professed holiness. I'm not afraid to use that word. I'm not afraid of that word. I once was, can I tell you when? When I gave a little bit and a little bit and a little bit more to the world. I didn't like the word holiness. I didn't like anybody that made me feel like, like that I needed to put some clothes on and cover up, even though you got that six pack to flash around. I didn't like that. And I didn't surround myself with a body of believers that would, that would be loving enough to tell me, hey, son, you better put some clothes on that naked body. They had made fun of her for her long hair and her holiness that she had embarked on. Year after year, Sister Teresa, when they would have family gatherings, they would make fun of her. But when it came time for daddy to die, she came in and she had her hair pulled up. And they said that she began to pull that hair down. And it hung way down, probably about like Sister Vicky's does. She didn't speak to anyone. She made her way inside that hospital room. And she got that hair and she just laid over on her father that had been soaked up to all kind of tubes. Devices, beeping noises that had driven me crazy. She laid her hair down on that man, her father that she loved. She prayed the prayer of faith. And do you want to know what happened? That man, they started unhooking him from the machines, from the life support. You don't just come up off of the life support. Can I tell you that there is a power on a woman's life? By doing just a little bit of research, you would learn that not only women of God that profess holiness, not just them embarked on that. When they read that there was a power in it, when they read that there was a power in it, they said, I want some of that. And we all think, oh, that's a good thing. I'm glad. I'm, oh, let's clap for them. No. Can I tell you what it was? It was witches. Because they read that there was a power in uncut hair. In that long uncut hair, there was a power. Witches turned to that. And it is a known fact that witches, before they, as they were cast in a spell, they would undo their long hair, such a Victoria. And they would go up to a high place. You can laugh if you want, baby doll. I'm trying to save somebody's life that needs some power. You want power? Then you will sacrifice. You will be obedient to God. You will not be a hindrance. If you want the power, or you can stand there and you can laugh and make fun in your head like I know you're doing, and I can come and lay hands on you right now. And if I did, you would never step foot in this house again. And that's the only reason why I'm not doing
Can I tell you that she has come under and she has said, ain't no witch gonna have more power than I am. She's desperate. She's desperate for the glory of God. And you might say, and it is, and it's a pity and it's a shame that it's so much on the ladies. And it is. But can I tell you that you have such a sweet exchange for sacrificing your hair unto God and letting it grow, baby, grow. How many is desperate for a, a move of God on their spouse? How many is desperate? What kind of lady? And I'm sorry, man. Ladies in this house, they're going to get prayer tonight. They're going to receive prayer tonight. I can tell you other instances. There was this woman's child that was injured in a car wreck. And she got down, Sister Melissa, and she prayed, God, I want the power. She bowed herself to God. I will never place scissors to my hair to cut it or trim it. Save my child. And guess what? That child is saved today. He's saved today. All because that mama got down and she decided, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to hinder what God is trying to give me. One of God in this house. God is trying to birth something in you. And it's going to start when you begin to tell God, I'm giving it all to you. And I do apologize that holiness is, is the, the ladies, they shoulder the holiness. They do. But again, if you would just, if ladies would look at it as, it's not a burden. If you want power, that's it. If you want power, tap me in for that. If you're a woman tonight and you want power, I want you to begin to say, Tap, I want in on that. Come on now, I want in on that. I want my child set free from drugs. I want my child filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to be a hindrance. I want the power. Ladies in this church, I want you to step up if you want the power. You're going to need strength. You're going to need strength. Can I tell you that you're going to step out? I want this only taken by serious women of God. If you want the power in your life, it's going to set you apart. Come on now, keep your minds on God. It's going to set you apart and it's going to make you look different. But you got to get desperate enough to say, my loved one needs, needs deliverance. I'm going to sacrifice my long and cut hair. Lord, I praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord, I praise you, Lord Jesus. They want to tell you how it is such a burden. I want a woman that that before tonight has had had their hair done in a salon. How much did it cost you? Them. Eight hundred. You bougie. So I know you. You option. That's one hundred thirty probably. Now I ain't talking about perms. I'm talking about cut. And the world wants you to think and be under the uh, assumption that you're burdened with your long hair. Can I share it? A beautician would have a, a saint of God, a woman of God in this house to believe your hair just looks so damaged. <laughs> Let me help you out with that. Your hair just looks so damaged. Can I tell you tonight, just as I have said it before, that, that you have some people in your life that you need to put on the block list? Ladies of God that is full of the Holy Ghost, there is some people in your life and it is a beautician that you need to put on the block list. Why? Because there's power in a sister pale. I could go to each and every one of you ladies and ask you, 
What is the what is the problem that you got going on? And you can be specific, right? You can be specific. Tonight you're leaving a different set of ladies, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. This is not for a show. This is not for attention from men. And let YouTube blow up. I care not. I want to please God over anybody. And when God lays it on my heart, I've got to put it on the congregation. Men and women alike. Ladies, can I just tell you, now I'm not only proud of you for making this commitment, but you're shouldering the power. You're shouldering the power of angels. Men can be anointed. And we are. But it doesn't say that we have the power of angels. Can you imagine having an angel right beside you and having power to say, I'm laying this long uncut hair on this situation. My spouse will be delivered. My spouse will be set free. My child will be delivered from being addicted. My children
I want you to repent over the name of Jesus and I'm going to come around and anoint each and every one of you with a supernatural strength. Will you be my oil bearer?